Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to The Discriminating Gamer, the board game review show that just tricked yourself into revealing yourself as the murderer. Constable! No? In that case, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and review the Justice League strategy game from WizKids. In the Justice League strategy game from WizKids, two to five players take on the iconic roles of DC Comics characters. You can take on one of the heroes, Superman, Batman, Cyborg, or Wonder Woman, or the evil dark side, Prince of Apocalypse. Now the board is a series of locations around the world, many cities around the world. You also have two special locations, the Watchtower, which is the Justice League's orbiting headquarters, and of course the planet Apocalypse, which is Darkseid's homeworld from which he launches this evil crisis invasion of Earth. Now this game is all about Darkseid trying to win uh, versus the other guys trying to win. It's an all-on-one game here. Very simply, here's how the game works. Each player, each uh, hero rather, has a different abilities. They have strength, they have agility, they have tech. And they only have a certain number that they start out with. These little tokens that go on kind of one side of their uh, ability area on the card. Now, what they're going to do is throughout the game, uh, Darkseid is going to have uh, various crises that he's going to put out in the different cities. The heroes, then, are going to attempt to solve these crises to gain victory points. Now, Darkseid himself can manipulate the cards in order to gain the victory for himself, but it's not quite that simple. Each hero and dark side is going to get a number of power cards at the beginning of the game. These have a little symbol of the character on them to show that uh, they're, they're starter cards, but there are different cards they can kind of level up to as the game goes on. You don't really take turns. The heroes and dark side all play cards simultaneously. Each hero chooses one card, dark side chooses two cards, and you lay them down. Now, each of these cards have a number on it, and that shows kind of when things resolve. You go in order, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, etc., and so timing is very important in this game. Heroes can move um, from cities to cities, or they can move back to the uh, watchtower to heal and kind of repair. Uh, they can attempt to solve crises. If they go to a location of the crises, they can reveal it, or they can work on it. And how they do that is they can go ahead and take whatever ability tokens they have, and they look at the crisis card and what abilities it requires. So, for instance, if... Uh, some crisis requires five agility, well, they can take five agility, slide it over, and that's solved. But if they don't have that much agility, they can slide over some, and then they can roll a die. When they roll a die, it's kind of a crapshoot, because uh, if they roll a, roll a JL symbol, they solve it, no problem. If they roll some of the numbers, they can get some, they act as some of the tokens, but some of the numbers also act as kind of wounds that then the hero is dealt. If the hero gets three wounds, and on his next turn, he must go back to the watchtower to heal. Now, Darkseid 2 is playing cards, and he can draw new Crisis cards, he can play Crisis cards on the board, um, and critically, he wants to advance Crisis, and this is kind of how he gains victory points. If he advances three uh, advancement tokens onto cards, he can then play a Triumph card, which then means he can essentially take those Crisis cards and score them for himself. Now, at the end of a round, after everybody's gone, if the heroes have gained experience points, which they gain by solving the crises, um, if they can take those experience points, they can actually spend them to click their hero, the base of their hero, to get them to level up. If they level up, sometimes they can draw a new power card, or they can get a new token ability, sometimes they can do both. Darkseid 2 has the power to level up, he's going to get stronger as the game advances, he's going to get more cards as the game advances, and you're going to get more crises out there. Now, there are two ways each side can win. If either side gets 12 victory points, they win. The heroes can also win if they've solved all the crises on the board. If ever there are no crises on the board, then the uh, heroes win the game. Dark side, however, at the beginning of the game, draws kind of a, a, an ultimate goal card, kind of his special victory condition, which he keeps secret from the other players. They may, saw, say, solve certain kinds of uh, crises, a, a certain number of certain kinds of, of crises, or if he solves three different kinds of crises. Um, it, depending on kind of what his unique conditions are, he can win that game as well. So that is just a very, very brief overview of the Justice League strategy game. There's a lot more going on here. There's a lot of abilities on the cards, a lot of things the heroes can do on the cards. And then, of course, there's a lot of real kind of subtle and interesting things that occur throughout the game as well. Now, this is a game that has been on my radar for a couple of years, and I've been very interested in it. Of course, I'm very attracted to the theme. I like superhero games. 
And, you know, to be perfectly blunt, I, I love what Marvel's doing with the cinematic universe. When I was a very young boy, I was absolutely in love with the Hulk. I was in love with Spider-Man. Um, as I got older, though, and I became a teenager, I really became a DC Comics junkie. I started collecting DC Comics, started with Batman titles, went over to Superman, Flash, Green Lantern, started collecting all these different comic book titles published by DC. And so I've got a very special place in my heart for DC Comics and the DC Comics characters. And I was very intrigued when this game came out, but I just kind of never got around to actually playing it. Uh, the good people at WizKids uh, sent me this to review, and I was delighted. I was delighted to get a chance to finally play this game. There's a lot of really fun and interesting things going on here. I have to say, I am a big, big, huge fan of the fact that you don't play turns in this game. That you each kind of play uh, the cards, and then it's kind of whatever action you've selected determines your order. So you can play you know, really powerful cards, but maybe they happen late and other things are going to occur on the board that maybe render that card not so incredible. Uh, or vice versa, you can play maybe a weaker card, but you got to go first, which can have effects uh, on, on the other people in the game. And that's very cool. It reminds me a lot of Mission Red Planet and the way you play cards in that game. And I really, really like that mechanic. I like the figures. They look good. Um, there's a lot of the, the tokens uh, that come in the game. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of tokens, and so there's a, it's a little fiddly. It's not too bad, but it's a little fiddly with all the tokens there, and that's yeah, it is what it is. Um, the way you're solving crises, I think, is is interesting. But to be honest, I'm not a huge fan of that aspect of the game because I think it's too deterministic. I really wish, as far as the crises went, there was some other. I would have liked a mechanic other than just having a certain number of tokens and slide it over, and then maybe you can roll the die, which gives you a little bit of chance. I don't know. I would have liked maybe some kind of combat mechanic that happened, because the crises very often are other characters, like Steppenwolf or Parademons or Desaad, um Granny Goodness. All these various DC Comics villains are, are often the, the, the crises. And I would have liked maybe a dice roll-off, or I, I, I'm not sure what. Maybe that would have taken it too far away from what they were trying to do. But I wanted more from that crisis interaction that happened. Now you can even attack, you, you can attack Darkseid, and you can fight him directly. Um, depending on the number of players, he has a card, and, and, and as he's fighting, they can, they can attempt to overcome him. Darkseid can, can get wounded, and he goes back to, the, to Apocalypse, and the good guys can get a two-victory point token. So, I mean, there, there are things like that. There is direct conflict in this game. But again, it's, it's, it's a little too deterministic, uh, the way the cards are working, for my tastes. And I wasn't a big fan of that. What I like about this game, too, is it's not a very long game. You can play this, I think, in 45 minutes to an hour. It's, it's, so it's a, it's a pretty quick, relatively fast-moving game when you know what you're doing. Uh, and, I, and I like that aspect of it, too. All told, however, i got to admit, I, I, I enjoyed this game, but I wasn't in love with this game. I think maybe I built it up into my head a little bit. It wasn't quite what I was hoping for. Uh, I, I did like it. I thought it was fun, but just eh, not quite enough, I suppose. The recommendation for the discriminating gamer, therefore, is going to be a try it before you buy it. Uh, I, I think people will enjoy a lot of the mechanics here. It's got some fun stuff. It's got a great theme. But uh, on the whole, I thought it was just okay. Thank you once again for joining us today on The Discriminating Gamer. As always, we ask you to please leave a comment for us on YouTube, on Board Game Geek, on our Facebook page, or on thediscriminatinggamer.com. We ask you to please like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. We are The Discriminating Gamer. And ladies and gentlemen, we've now seen Jack Nicholson, Heath Ledger, Jared Leto play the Joker. But as far as I'm concerned, the Joker will always be Cesar Romero. Good night, America. Please somebody help me on my feet again. And I don't know where I'm going and I don't know where I've been. Please somebody help me on the solid ground. It's a long time and I'll be dying. Once a year I wind up in the band. Anytime I can show pictures of me in my underwear and win a game, I'm for it.